before Bannerfall goes away, I want to try out Top Tree Dawnblade. So let's look at what the opponents are using, then I'll quickly go through what I'm using. Okay, so two speed boots and invis. They have a pulse rifle, so they do have range. Okay. You see everything on the build right now? Let's explain it on the fly. So Starfire Protocol is the exotic armor I have, which lets me use two fusion grenades. By holding down the grenade button, it consumes the grenade and lets me float. So I use this float to take off angles and put in giant damage with my dead man's tail. So where's the invis? There it is. Guess he jumped off the map. Uh, so I will dodge randomly expecting the invis to just be lining up a snipe or something like that if I have no idea where he is. That's the benefit of playing with the team is you can call that sort of thing out, but in solo queue, you're left to your own devices. Uh, so this time, since I shot him up, I'm going to drop my rift and they might be taking a sky angle. Yep, there is the invis. Ready? Aim. Got him. And I still have some wicked burst damage with fusion grenades. Like, I could pop them for 50 damage in the body, aim around here, and then just launch the fusion grenade. And if it sticks them, that's game over. The shotgun is the best shotgun in the game, barring none. For this class, it is a surplus max range setup. And notice I have three abilities up right now. You need three abilities for the plus 50 handling, bringing it to a grand total of 98. All I want to do once I put my damage in is dodge so that he's wasting time on me and not looking at teammates. Impact induction means that if I land a melee, I get more grenades. And then finally, on my class item, I have bomber, so that using my rift gives me my nade energy. So, for example, it helps me keep my surplus healthier. I don't want to aim down sides here yet. Alright, now I have heat rises. Now I go off to the side. Invis should be breaking any second now. Okay. Wasn't there to help. That's my fault. So one's about to go low. I'm ready. I can time the grenade out now. No stick? Yes stick. No stick. Alright, melee out. Got my tag, now I get my nade again. Just pop heat rises, start getting some distance. I don't see him, so that, yep, exactly. Gotta be around the side already. He's gonna rift up any second now, so I need to rift up. Nate out. This time that goes over. Work my other angle. 13 damage. Let's go somewhere new. Got my kill. Just wait on my health. I can kill him all blind. That's fine. Good. Just manage your angles. Put your meaningful damage in. I also had a super to fall back on. So cycling my abilities. You see how much that comes up? Everything is min-maxed here. If I ever need six resilience to handle a thorn, I just take away one discipline. Five intellect is enough with the aggression that I play. And I usually play with 9 elect uh, teammates anyway, so they just get first super and then feed me an orb. I'm ready to toss a nade up top. Um, my eyes are physically right here though, by the way, whenever I'm uh, setting up my crosshairs.
Cranial spike means two taps. And I still could have supered there. So this loadout fits the theme of the longer they sit, the worse it gets. Because if they camp, I start building up cranial spikes, which ups my damage. I get to set empowering rifts everywhere. At any moment, I can shoot them in the body, throw a fusion grenade, and that's a kill. I can keep them burned down with the ranged melee so they can't get reses and stuff like that. Obviously, Solar Nade does the best job at this. But if I'm going to use Solar Nade, I'm going to use a different build entirely. Like maybe Illumina Assembler, Necrotic Grip, etc. This build takes complete advantage of the best primary in the game and the best shotgun in the game. It makes it so that, th that they're operating at full power. Surplus times 3, 98 handling, with the most range on any shotgun in the game with full choke. This is probably the longer kill distance than most shotties from the hip, let alone aim down sights. Finally, I have Threat Detector with Disruption Break. I think Single Point Sling might be the play here over Radar Booster, but I'll switch that if I ever need it. So even if I don't get the one-shot kill, it primes my Dead Man's Tail to clean up. Then I have one Shotgun Targeting, one Scout Targeting. I could run double Scout Targeting, but I run single Scout Targeting on majority of my other builds, so I want to keep my aim consistent across all of them. I'll pass that. I hope you enjoyed this build. This armor took an actual eternity to farm out, uh, but check out Destiny Item Manager right here. I just go like this. Starfire DMT Shoddy, Starfire DMT Snipe. So I'm going to hit the Snipe, watch what happens. Boom, everything changes. Just switch my Bond back to the correct one. Then, this is the scary part. Check the Sniper Rifle. This baby's got 100 handling when Surplus is ramped up, so it's exactly 100. It was full bar just for maintaining these. So I am given a quick draw snapshot sniper with the deadliest primary in the game. And the build just operates a very similar way. And then, if for some reason I don't want to use Dead Man's Tail, even though it's the best primary in the game, I go like this and go to my generic build. My generic build has nine discipline because the armor isn't as good but that's still fine. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to use Hawk Moon with this setup. Well, then I put on hand cannon targeting, take my surplus shoddy, and now I am Hawk Moon Dawn Blade. That is how much I like this exotic. Also, it's six and elect on this one. Because the DMT is really reliant on having that in-air accuracy, and I want that up as much as possible. Whereas with the rest of the kit in the game, maybe not. I hope you found this video useful and enjoyable. I will see you in the next one.